This is the entrance to the Red Pyramid. We're going down the shaft and we're going to go into these incredible rooms which are acoustic chambers. Forget about the idea of tombs, think sound, and vibrational technology. So this is actually inside, about 20 feet, more than 100 feet to go. Okay, now we're maybe a third of the way in. And Yusuf Awiyan, the dark figure, is about to come past me. Okay, maybe halfway down now, and the heat is already starting to, to pick up in here, as well as the heat generated by uh, anticipation and awe. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the descending passageway. It's got to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now. And now we're going sideways. So we're inside the first of the of the main chambers of the Red Pyramid and it is tuned to A. That seems to be the sound that it likes the best. So I've just walked through uh, a short tunnel into the second of the chambers here and the sides of them taper in with these almost baffle-like stones and of course that is it could be actually an acoustic cone filter of some kind. The lighting's pretty terrible, but we, you can see there is a massive crack in the solid stone. And that's part of the theory, again, that this was an energy generating device, as were some of the others of the pyramids on the Giza Plateau, and that they actually became overloaded at one point partially exploded and then shut down. And as hard as it may be imagined to believe, we could be talking about that explosion occurring about 12,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. And then we go up five flights of stairs and we reach another chamber, the third. It's smaller, but still, it, it looks like a cone filter too. So we're up five flights of stairs, and it's tall enough to walk through, but the smell of bat dung is almost unbearable. So this one actually has 13 baffles. 15? Yeah. The other two had 11, I think. Yeah. So again, the tightness of the joinery here, the tightness of the fit. This has... Um, a kerf in it so it doesn't look super high quality but this shows you that these fit right next to each other the stone is limestone but it has a lot of what seems to be crystal in its structure the surface of the stone is stippled meaning it's not completely flat but I can't see, these look like tool marks, but what kind of tool? Is it a punch or what was used? But again, this is a chamber and it's perpendicular to the other two. Five flights of stairs up and the hallway is big enough for me, six feet, to be able to walk straight through. So Stephen, we were just in what's called the Red Pyramid, and there's, there were three chambers in there. That's correct. Uh, the third one perpendicular to the others. Do you have um, words of wisdom for its original function or anything? Well, yes, of course. It's a, as we did our toning and chanting in there, the resonance of sound is, a, is a tremendous in the first two chambers. But what's key about the upper chambers, when we look down, we see massive water erosion. And we're told that's where the water came in. And so what we continue is the, the link of all the pyramids is water was the source of the energy. And the acoustics, the harmony was there to work on the bonds of water, to break it into hydrogen and oxygen. 
and that's key in the Great Pyramid. But even here, the water was used to produce the electromagnetic fields with the residents to continue this, that pyramid humming as a machine. And as we have said, each pyramid was tuned to a different frequency of sound.